Hello everybody! This video is focusing on new player tips, things that I wish people had told me when I first started out, things I've learned while playing that I think would help new players a lot, just general tips and tricks so you perhaps don't feel as lost and you get a good start in the game. Enjoy! Before you even start up the game, what you can do is add up a security key to your account. A security key is an extra security measure for your account, but we care about it because every month you have the security key on your account, you get 100 cartel coins. The cartel coins are the premium currency of the game and can be used to buy various items like cosmetics, unlocks and things like that. Unless you subscribe or buy cartel coins, they are hard to get, so it is highly recommended to add the security key to your account because every month, even when you're not playing, you will get a hundred cartel coins. Next up, once you get to the character creator, it is important to pick a story that clicks with you, a story and a character that you really like because you are going to be playing with this character for a very long time. The class stories, or origin stories as they're now called, are the strongest uh, narrative content in the game. So make sure that you pick a story that you like and if you start the game and you feel like you're not clicking with the story, don't worry, you have other character slots, go ahead and use them you can come back to this character later, it's not a big deal. Make sure that you really like your starting choice because first impressions are important and it'd be a shame if you get burned out from a story that is not right for you. As soon as you load up the game, you will see this setup right here. You might notice that you only get one quick bar which will quickly not be enough for all your abilities. You can click these buttons here to cycle through your abilities, but of course it's not recommended because you will be fumbling around with your abilities a lot. One thing you can do as soon as you uh, load into the game is to just click this plus button here and either just click extended quick bars which will show you all of the available quick bars to you. Very useful, gets everything set up for you. Or if you want something more detailed, you can click the plus icon here and open the interface editor and tweak everything as you see fit. For example, you can click this quick bar here that's empty, I don't need it. And I can just untick this and it will save my choice to not have this quick bar. I can put a custom name, I can save it, and then when I'm ready, I can load it up on any character I wish. For example, I have my favorite setup saved on the name test interface Bigger Subs. It has bigger subtitles that I like, things like that. So I just click it and it loads it up instantly on any character I want. Very useful, highly recommend it. Once you reach a high enough level, another thing you really need to do as soon as you can is get your stronghold. A stronghold is basically your house in the game. You can get one as both a Republic or Imperial character. And you can find a mission that will get you to start looking for a stronghold either on the Republic or Imperial fleet or on Coruscant or Droman Cass. On Coruscant, the NPC is over here. You will recognize them by their large hollow. The same NPC is on the fleet as well. And on the Imperial fleet and Drummond Gas, there is an NPC that looks similar to this. 
once you get a mission it will guide you to the correct terminal that will allow you to buy your stronghold the strongholds are very cheap so it is highly recommended to buy them straight away they are so cheap you will have more than enough money from just finishing your starting planet but don't worry about it we want to complete the mission through the NPC because once we finish the mission of that NPC it will give us some items that will help us with some other tips in this video completing their mission gives us some starting uh, stronghold items that we need so once we pick the mission up you can go right here and buy the starting stronghold for Imperial Eats Drum and Cass just go to purchase and the option to buy it will be right here so you buy the stronghold as soon as you can and then the mission will ask you to travel to your stronghold so you go to the starting stronghold for me it's this one here as you can see I travel there simply by just going to the menu bar up here and clicking this or I can press U on my keyboard like it shows here and it shows all of my strongholds when you first start out you won't see so many these are the ones I have bought along the way and once you stay inside the stronghold for a couple of minutes you will get a mission complete and you will get some items to start decorating your stronghold the item we actually care about is a legacy storage this thing over here when you place down the legacy storage this item over here you will see it in a menu like this when you place it down and you hide the hooks and you right click on the storage you will be able to store any item you want and these items will be shared across all of your characters this is great for any for example gift you want to save up to give to another companion things like that but if you are not subscribed the most important thing about the legacy stronghold storage is that you can store you can deposit any extra credits you have if you are not subscribed you have a 1 million credit limit which you will reach very quickly especially since there are not a lot of items to buy when you first start out when you go above the 1 million limit the credits will automatically go to your escrow it will appear here you won't be able to access the escrow unless you subscribe or you spend cartel points which we really don't want to use we should never have to spend cartel points for the escrow it is a waste of cartel points don't do it what to do instead is to put any extra credits you have in the legacy stronghold for example i have a thousand in my inventory here i can click deposit and i can just place it in the storage over here and if i want to take it out i can just click withdraw and take it out again and as much money as i want i have accumulated 3 million credits across my characters at this point in time i cannot carry it all on me if i'm not subscribed but i can store it safely in my storage without losing access to anything another thing you should do as soon as you are able most likely when you reach the imperial or republic fleet is to get crew skills crew skills are skills that your companions can do you can send them out on various missions and depending on the type of crew skill you have they will bring back items such as gifts crafting materials they can craft certain items for you from armor to healing steams things like that 
you can get the starting mission to do this from the fleet in the combat training section in this priority mission terminal you can find a mission that will be here that says crafting trainers you pick it up and you can go to the crew section of the fleet the crew skill section on the fleet is over here for imperial side and on the opposite side for republic there are various crew skills from synth weaving armor tech biochem artifice and arms tech as well as cyber tech these are crew skills that require crafting so crafting armor crafting items crafting power crystals things like that and there are other missions that give you materials such as treasure hunting underworld trading diplomacy and investigation the most useful if you don't want to do a lot of crafting are scavenging slicing as well as perhaps archaeology or bioanalysis you can sell any crafting materials you don't plan on using on the gtn for credits Another thing that might not be very obvious when you first start out, if perhaps you, uh, I mean, when you first start out a new game, you might get overwhelmed, right? So just keep in mind that when you first start out, the purple mission that you have is your main mission. That's your story mission. To open your mission log, you can press L on your keyboard, go to mission here, and your class missions are the ones that you have to do for your main story. If you see here under class, I, this character hasn't done uh, much. They're still just finished their starting planet. So it's telling me to go to Drummond Cast. I cannot abandon this mission because it's my main mission. If I can abandon a mission, it means it's not my main class story so i can easily for example if i say yeah i don't care about this for some reason i click abandon Oop. and if i'm also experiencing a bug with a mission you can click reset and it will reset the mission and you can start start it over without abandoning it right however even though the purple missions are the mission for your class story. Each planet, after your starting one, has its own um, storyline, let's say. For example, Drummond Cass also has its own planet storyline, which will be marked with a purple mission. These missions you don't have to do in order to continue with your class story but they are um, let's say the second most important and bigger missions you can do while you go through the planets naturally while you go through your main story again you don't have to do it but the fact that they are purple it means they are important and of course if you are a new player I do recommend that for your first playthrough you do go through the extra steps and you play through the planet storylines because they're all well made it's just an extension of your story they're not uh, just uh, go and kill 10 wolves <laughs> or things like that they're actually story heavy missions of their own so that's very nice and that goes to my uh, next point, which is for this MMO, it is very important, in my humble opinion, that you take your time. You don't have to rush to get to endgame. In fact, it's one of the MMOs where endgame perhaps is not the ideal goal. The strong point of the game is the journey so take your time especially for your first playthrough 
pay attention, enjoy the story. If you want, do the side missions on the planets you come across. They're all fun. There are very few missions that I found haven't had their own cutscenes, their own dialogue options, things like that. I highly recommend that you check them out. Doing side missions also helps you gain experience, though you won't have a problem doing the main story missions as they are very easy. If you are lagging behind on levels, you can do heroic missions on the planet you come across, which are harder missions that are soluble, that give you high level gear and a lot of experience and credits. You can also fast travel to the exact point of the heroic mission by clicking the little icon next to the mission name. By default, you can only see certain missions on the map. That was in order to um, not overwhelm players, but if you're a completionist and you want to do every single mission on the map, you can actually activate some more by going to your map with M. And over here on the left, it says show exploration missions. Exploration missions will appear with this icon above them, a triangle with a little star. And if you see, if I go back to the map and turn off exploration missions, this uh, guy will no longer give me the mission. If I turn it on, his icon is back and I can actually talk to him. On each planet you have speeders, which you can use to travel to areas that you haven't unlocked yet. For example, I want to go to Cass City now, so I just take the ca taxi since I haven't been there by myself yet. The credit cost is very low, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about spending credits to um, go to an area that you haven't explored. You will have the credits back in no time. When you first start out, you might not know that when you press P on your keyboard, it opens your ability window. And a very nice ability that you start out with is a quick travel. When you are moving around on your starting planet or any planet, when you reach safe spaces or just maps that you can fast travel to, you simply just click the quick travel ability and you are able to fast travel at any point that is unlocked for you. This is the symbol. Once you ha have everything set up here, it would be a good idea to tweak with your preferences. This, of course, you don't have to do all of this right away. This is just a video that is saying everything all together. Don't get overwhelmed. It's fine if you don't want to worry about this yet, okay? But, for example, when you start out, your camera distance might be a little bit too close. So I highly recommend you go into the controls in preferences and you just increase the camera max distance to a hundred. This does not decrease the closest you can zoom in. It just allows you to zoom out more. So you can even go as close as first person and then like this. And I can go all the way back like this. And another thing that other people suggest is, for example, in the user interface, you can um, enable or disable the subtitles for conversations. I highly suggest you turn them on. And also another thing, though that is up to you, if you want to role play uh, without having a hint of uh, what alignment you're picking, keep this turned off like I do. But if you want to know if a certain choice you make will give you light side or dark side points, that is the alignment system in Sotor. You can turn off the so conversation alignment game, and in every conversation choice that gives you, that leans you towards a certain side, it will let you know with the a very obvious uh, symbol. So you can turn that on. When it comes to your legacy, your legacy is basically um, anything you do all of your characters in the server you are playing. 
but you can also buy unlocks that make your life easier, make things uh, faster in uh, next playthroughs or as you level up and play more. So your legacy, which you can open by pressing Y or going from the menu bar here. The first time you open this up, it will ask you to name your legacy. I named it Mando. And you will have a list, a long list of things you can buy to make things easier. These are not necessary to play. It's just uh, optional unlocks like get more XP when you do certain missions, um, gain more uh, influence with companions, uh, things like that. The character perks are for each character separately. So if I get this unlock to get more experience when I talk with companions, I won't have this unlock on another character. But there is a global unlock section, which when I go here in other, there are a bunch of things I can purchase that will count for every single character I have, which is very nice. For example, I can make it so my quick travel ability has a shorter cooldown. I highly recommend you get it once you get uh, enough credits. It's not that much. I don't remember how much this costs, but for example, the next one is 200,000. And it makes, it makes it so you can fast travel instantly. Very useful, especially when you move back and forth a lot. I highly recommend it, makes your life easier. So since we mentioned that Sotor is a very story-focused game, to add to that, it's not just a story-focused game, but it is also a companion-focused game. The characters are very important in the story. Your class story revolves around getting certain companions, different ones for each class story, and talking to them as you go through the story. So when you have a companion with you, when you go through class stories, class um, missions uh, on planets and stuff, they gain influence when you pick a dialogue option that they like. So when I have Mako with me, for example, if I say something she likes, she will approve. She will gain influence. Influence, which you can see here, is basically the way the companion levels up. It is the way they get stronger. Companions no longer get stronger by the armor they wear. You can put them in anything you want. It won't matter. Any gun you give them, even if it's the strongest gun in the game, it's just cosmetic for them. What makes them stronger is the influence they have. So if I keep saying things Mako likes, and if I give her gifts, for example, this item here, which you can see how much influence will give them. So if, for example, I give her this holo sculpture, she gets 45 influence. The more influence level she has, the stronger she will be. She will heal me better, she will deal more damage, everything. Usually, in certain content of the game, if you want to solo it, a level 50 influence companion might be a perfect replacement for another player. Don't worry, influence does not matter when it comes to their story. Their story gets unlocked automatically with your main story progress. If, for example, I finish with my class story, on Drum and Cast, Mako will automatically have the next part of her personal uh, character storyline unlocked. It doesn't matter if she doesn't like me when it comes to imprints. All right? So we mentioned that whatever you put on companions uh, don't help them in combat. It's just a visual thing. But for us, of course, any outfit we have on, it counts for our item rating. So when uh, we level up and stuff, usually we get better armor. I am wearing 
the best items I have in my gear. So while you play through the game, it is important that you pay attention to the rating of the items. Since the main story content is very easy, it is recommended to just keep attention to the rating and put on any item that has a higher uh, rating number, regardless of their actual stats. Just keep building your I rating up, okay? But if you want to um, have a look of a certain armor while still wearing the best gear you have, you can start doing this straight away in your Outfitter section. So if I go to Outfitter and I want to wear this coat and I want to go to an Outfitter slot, which is this. So in my Outfitter section, I can have outfits that I can wear visually, for example, this one while still wearing the armor that I want, the high eye rating armor. I will still do the same damage and have the same protection, but visually I will be wearing this. So if I want to wear another outfit, if I want to, for example, wear this coat I have here, I can go and if I'm, uh, I don't have any other outfit slots, I can buy one and go here purchase with credits. We don't want to spend cartel coins for things like this, okay? And I, on my new outfit slot, I can just right click and wear the armor that I want the visual effect of. Now, with the new update, we can also do the same thing for weapons. So for example, I want to use this nice gun I got, so I just right click it. I actually right click it twice because I have dual blasters and I can visually look like I'm holding these blasters instead of the ones I'm wearing which I don't like the look of. You can also click this to hide or uh, show your helmet. And then when you're ready you commit the outfit modifications. You will need to pay money for this. Credits, don't spend cartel coins like I said. The lower level you are, the less money you will need to spend. So just as a tip, make an outfit you like at a low uh, level and save it so you can wear it when you are higher level. So yes. So these are the starting tips I could come up with and uh, people have suggested to me when I was uh, researching for this video. Of course, if you have more tips to add, feel free to add them in the comments. I would uh, love to hear from people that have also been playing the game for a long time, things they've been telling uh, other players um, that uh, first start out with the game. So yes, I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. If you're a new player, I really hope this helped you. I hope uh, it wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate to message me. I really like uh, helping people, especially new players. That's why I make uh, videos that uh, other people perhaps have also covered in the past. I just really uh, enjoy making them. Uh, feel free to subscribe to be notified about future videos. I also have uh, a Twitch you can uh, follow so you can watch me live when I play Sotor or other games. I have a Twitter, I have a Discord. And yeah, anything you need, just let me know. I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!